Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's uh, November the 28th already and it's the second chapter of Peter's second letter that we're reading today which is headed Beware of False Teaching. Beware of False Teaching. He begins in verse 1 saying, But there were false prophets also among the people. Now notice that little word, but. But. You see, this passage is linked to the previous passage. And in the previous passage, we were on a mountaintop. <laughs> if you remember, he says, For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, <clears throat> but holy men of God spake as they were moved of the Holy Spirit. But there were false prophets also among the people. You see, wherever the prophets of God stood up to speak, there were always the false prophets there to lead the people astray. He says, there were false prophets among the people, as there are false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. <clears throat> As Christians, we need to be very aware of the fact that actually, as well as true teaching, there's also false teaching. As well as true prophets of the Lord, there are false prophets. And today, of course, we would say, as well as being true teachers of the word, so there are false teachers of the word and this passage will explain to us very very accurately very carefully it'll give us a complete history of the Old Testament false prophets and <coughs> what Peter will show is this is that it is possible for you as a Christian to be able to recognize a false teacher when you see one he says this he says in verse 3, Through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now what does that mean? It means that these false teachers love money. And they love the money that you've got. And they want the money that you've got. And what they're going to do is they're going to use all possible means they're going to use all sleight of hand feigned words pretend they're going to use all sorts of means to make merchandise of you they want your money they want what you've got whose judgment now a long time lingereth and their damnation slumbereth not these men they're men of the flesh and they're after you so beware he says also if God didn't spare the angels that sinned that is in the days of Noah and cast them down to hell then he will not, he will not spare these men <coughs> Noah was saved the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly and the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were turned into ashes by fire that came down from heaven and it condemned them with an overthrow making them an example to those that would live ungodly <coughs> we all know what went on at Sodom and Gomorrah God destroyed them but he delivered just Lot who was vexed with, vexed with their filthy conversation. That com word conversation means the way in which they live. He was vexed every day. His righteous heart was vexed every day by the filthy lives of the wicked. And that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing um, vexed his righteous soul every day by their unlawful deeds so let me ask you this <clears throat> so far we've learnt about the false teachers how do you recognize a false teacher 
Well, you recognize a false teacher not necessarily easily by what they say. It's what they do. If they're after money, always. If they're after you to enslave you, to make merchandise of you. If they are there to pervert you. If they are there to to take you into deeper and deeper sin as in Sodom and Gomorrah then that's false teaching you see false teaching is not just a theoretical thing it is something that's based upon how we live false teaching leads to false living and and unholy teaching leads to unholy living now verse 9, my password for the day is this, verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows how to deliver you and he also knows how to reserve the wicked for the day of judgment. He says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Notice some of the things. They despise government. Be very wary of those that despise government. Got that? They are presumptuous. They are self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now it disturbs me very greatly. When people slander and bad mouth our presidents, our prime ministers, our kings and all those that are in authority, we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to bad mouth them. What we're supposed to do is pray for them. We're to pray for them. Not to blast their character. Not to say vile things about them. You see, these men are God's ministers. They're the servants of God. And they are raised up by God and are answerable to Him. Not to you. They're answerable to Him. <coughs> he says in verse... He says in verse 12... But they are natural brute beasts. They're made to be taken and destroyed. They speak evil of things that they understand not. And they shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Have you got an idea now as to what false teachers are? He says in verse 14, They are having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. They beguile unstable souls. A heart they have exercised with covetous practices. They are cursed children. He talks about Balaam, the son of Basar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Balaam would do anything for money. And he was prepared to come from a foreign land into Israel and curse Israel. The Lord wouldn't let him do that. The Lord wouldn't allow that. He was going to do it. What was he going to come and do it for? Because somebody would give him some money. They paid him to come and curse Israel. God sent his angel, stood in his way and forbade him from doing that. He says they are wells without water. They are clouds carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Take a look at verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. I get messages on my Facebook every day. It says, say amen, like this. If you like this, you'll win the lottery. If you like this, I'm going to declare that in your life, you will be a millionaire by the end of the year. This all just feeds 
this all just feeds covetousness it's got nothing to do with godliness godliness with contentment is great gain if you want to be really happy and have a great deal of gain then all you need to do is be godly in your heart and be glad with what you've got all the great false teachers of today they promise money they promise power and they say you're gonna have it if you believe in me but send us some of your money in the meanwhile this is false teaching it's false teaching it leads to ungodliness because it's based on covetousness <coughs> And so verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. What is the true proverb? The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to the wallowing in the mire. These are men who've been made clean. These are men who are brute beasts, they're, they're pigs they've been washed and made all spruce and clean yeah but you give them half a chance and they will go and roll in the mud all over again these are dogs that have vomited up the unhealthy thing that disturbs their stomach and then they go and eat it all again this is disgusting but this describes false teachers that are among you he says there were false teachers among the people even as there are false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction a serious passage may God preserve you from false teachers God bless you look forward to speaking to you tomorrow have a wonderful day. Bye for now.